Hello, this is Matt Hesser with Dimensional Nomad Games, and welcome to Eclectic Decks, Episode 3, where we are talking about Naheb the Eternal. So Naheb is a mono-red commander. Uh, for 3 red-red, you get a 4-6 legendary creature, Zombie Minotaur Warrior. He has Afflict 3, which set means whenever this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses 3 life. And then at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add red to your mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. So what's nice is it doesn't matter uh, who dealt the damage, so if someone else deals the damage, uh, you also, or sorry, the loss of life, you also get the red mana, but mostly it's going to be you. So when I was designing the Heb, um, I usually design for a multiplayer format, so I looked at cards that would hit each opponent, that would take advantage of having lots of targets, and things like that. Because the idea with the deck is, before combat, I can hit each of my opponents, even if I just hit my opponents for one, that's still going to give me three extra mana to play with on my post-combat main phase. So a lot of what's happening is, Dealing extra damage before combat, maybe during combat, uh, attacking with the Heb or the other creatures in the deck, and then reaping the advantage of having excessive mana uh, in the post-combat main phase. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, how I went about building the deck. First, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the land base. So because it's a monocolored deck, really simple land base. It's 30 mountains. And then you've got your fetch lands in the form of Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, which both uh, tap, sack to search for a basic land and put it into play tapped. And then Myriad Landscape, which enters the battlefield, taps, taps for a colorless, or for two and tap and sack, you can go get two basic lands to share a land type, put them into play tapped, and then shuffle your library. Now, the reason you include search lands in a monocolor deck is it helps thin out the deck. That way, you're just likely to draw lands, and you're more likely to draw into your spells. Then we have a utility land in the form of Rogue's Passage. Uh, it taps for a colorless mana, or for four and tap. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. So you can use it on the Heb, who's a 4-6, so at least you can get four damage in, so it replaces the amount of mana that was spent on it. Or if you've got something bigger, you can use that to get bigger, so for four mana, you guarantee damage that you can then take advantage of with your commander later turn. The other land in the deck is Valakut the Molten Pinnacle. Now, Valakut the Molten Pinnacle enters the battlefield tapped. Whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, if you control at least five other mountains, you may have Valakut the Molten Pinnacle deal three damage to target creature or player, and it also taps for a red. Now, what's nice is that means that every mountain you play, once you get into the fifth mountain, becomes a lightning bolt. So it's free damage just for playing your land for the turn. Now, there are a couple of lands that I've debated putting in here to replace two of the mountains, and that is Vesiva, which enters play tapped as a copy of a land. Um, obviously, you'd want to copy Valakut, um, or maybe one of the search lands. And then Thespian Stage, which also copies one of your lands. Uh, I'm still playing with the land base, and I got to see how it works. Um, I don't have any ways of getting Valakut, so if I had more specific search capabilities, then maybe I would go with the copies, because that way I guarantee I have multiple copies and multiple ways of dealing damage every time I play a land. But right now, that's not really the focus of the deck, and it to take too many cards to enable that. But it is something I'm playing around with uh, in the back burner. So now we've got our land base. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the mana sources that I have also included in the deck. You've got your standards, like a soul ring, which is one mana for an artifact that taps for two mana. Mana vault, which is one mana for an artifact that does not untap during your untap step. Taps for three mana and says at the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay four mana if you do untap mana vault. And at the beginning of your draw step, if mana vault is tapped, it deals one damage to you. It's really good acceleration, especially later game, when you've got the four mana to throw out there. Uh, mostly it enables you to play your commander turn three, or turn two, if you turn one the mana vault. So turn one, land, mana vault, turn two, second land, tap, mana vault, play your commander. Because remember, he's only three and two red. So you can play him turn two with the mana vault. Of course, then you're taking damage because you're not going to have the four mana to untap him. But you've also got a four-six turn two. So that's something to consider. 
Then um, a later game mana rock is Dreamstone Hedron. For six mana, you get an artifact that taps for three. So not really mana efficient, but uh, in late game, it is pay three, tap, sacrifice it to draw three cards. So not only is it a mana rock earlier on or mid game, but then when you're in the later game, when you're needing to get to those extra draw spells or the extra damage abilities, you can sack it to draw three cards. Now, Gauntlet of Might is a older artifact that's a little bit more on the expensive side as far as dollar value, but there are other options you can replace it with, such as Gauntlet of Power and um, Cade Sun, something to keep in mind. But I like the Gauntlet of Might because it's the most efficient version of them. So it's four mana for an artifact that says red creatures are plus one, plus one, and mountains tap for an additional red mana. Super good. It's turn four, so a lot of mana acceleration out of it. Then we have Ruby Medallion, which is two mana for an artifact that says red spells you cast cost one less to cast. So that gets a lot of value as you're playing more spells. I mean, even one mana, it's still efficient. It's basically as if it tapped for one mana. But if you're casting two spells in a turn, then you're saving two mana, three mana, four, and so on, the more spells you cast in a turn. Now, Dublin Cube is one of those interesting cards that it, it takes something to make something. So in this case, it's two mana for an artifact that says pay three, tap double the amount of each type of mana in your mana pool. So in this case, you have to have at least seven mana to start to make this efficient because it costs three mana to use. So if you have anything less than seven mana, if you, let's say you have six mana, you spend three of it. Now you're down to three. You double three back down, back up to six. So you're not actually gaining any efficiency. But if you're at seven, when you spend three, you go down to four, double that to eight. So it's improvement once you hit the seven. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But even better is when you get to nine, ten, twelve mana. So those big hits when you're hitting three opponents at once or two opponents and you're getting a giant chunk of mana, this is going to be huge to just make that amount of mana massive. And then we've got a couple of creatures that go and get us lands. We have Burnished Heart, three mana for a 2-2 two -two artifact creature elk. Pay three, sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic lands, put them on the battlefield, tap to the shelf of your library. So once again, pulling those lands out, putting them into play. In the ever-popular Solemn Simulacrum, four mana for a 2-2 two -two artifact creature golem. When Solemn Simulacrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tap, and then shuffle your library. And when it dies, you draw a card. Probably one of the most efficient land fetch creatures in all of Magic. Alright, so we've looked at our land, we've looked at our, draw, or our mana sources. Now let's go ahead and look at some of our draw capabilities. Now, there's, this isn't all of the ones that are out there. There's a lot of uh, ones that I didn't include. These are just the ones that I happen to have in my deck. There's lots of other sources, so feel free to play around with them. But these are the ones that I decided to go with. So you've got Howling Mine, which is an artifact for two mana that says, at the beginning of each player's draw step, if Howling Mine is untapped, that player draws an additional card. So it's everyone draws an extra card during the draw step. So, yeah, your opponents get to draw. But hopefully you'll be able to better take advantage of having the extra cards in hand. Browbeat is two and a red for a sorcery that says any player may have Browbeat deal five damage to him or her. If no one does, target player draws three cards. Now generally you're going to target yourself. So the way this works is you target yourself saying I'm going to draw three cards unless someone wants to take six damage or five damage. So you look at each of your opponents starting in turn order and say, would you like to take five damage? Would you like to take five damage? Would you like to take five damage? So either way, you get value. Either someone's taking five damage, and if you have your commander out, that means five extra mana later on. Or you're drawing three cards, which is super value. All right, then we have Wild Guess, which is red, red for a sorcery that says it's an additional cost to cast Wild Guess, discard a card, and then draw two cards. Hopefully you'll have something extra like sitting, if you've got six lands in play or seven lands in play, you have an extra land in hand, pitch it to draw two cards. Wheel of Fortune is two and a red for a sorcery that says each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. Pretty standard uh, staple of draw in red. Then you have Reforge the Soul, which is three red red for the same ability. Uh, only difference is it also has Miracle for one and a red. So if it is the first card you've drawn for the turn, you can pay its Miracle cost, which again is one and a red, to cast the spell. Then we have the creature-based draw effects. Things like Sandstone Oracle costs 7 for a 4-4 four, four 
artifact creature sphinx with flying and when it enters the battlefield choose an opponent if that player has more cards in hand than you draw cards equal to the difference so if you've got no cards in hand somebody else has four you draw four or if you've got three and they've got six you draw three so you draw until you have the same amount of cards in hand what you usually do, target that guy who's been holding on, has a reliquary tower, has like 15 cards in hand, and you draw 15. Oh, uh, so good. All right, then we have Dragon Mage, which is 5 red red for a 5-5 five, five creature dragon wizard with flying. And then whenever Dragon Mage deals combat damage to a player, each player discards their hand and then draws 7 cards. So it's a Wheel of Fortune on a creature when it deals combat damage to a player. Really useful. Not only does it get you the wheel, but it's also a 5-5 flying. So it has built-in evasion, and it's dealing 5 damage. So with your commander, it's getting a lot of value. Then we have Combustible Gear Hulk, which is 4 red-red for a 6-6 six, six artifact creature construct with first strike. And when Combustible Gear Hulk enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw 3 cards. If the player doesn't, put the top 3 cards of your library into your graveyard, then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. So you're either going to get a draw, which is good, or you're going to deal damage with your commander, which is good. So it's a win-win, plus it's a 6-6 six, six first strike for 6. Pretty good body. All right, then we have Kozilek Butcher of Truth. This is one of the most expensive in terms of mana cost spells in the deck. It's 10 mana for a 12-12 legendary creature Eldrazi. So this is usually one that you're going to be casting after you get a bunch of mana from Neheb's ability. When you cast Kozilek Butcher of Truth, draw four cards. And he has an Annihilator, four. And when he is put into the graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle them back into your library. So again, probably only going to get played with Neheb... Um, after you've played a bunch of uh, damage onto someone. And then um, Tower of Fortunes. It's four mana for an artifact that is pay eight, tap, draw four cards. Again, it's eight mana, which is normally not that big of a deal in Commander. Uh, but usually you're going to take advantage of this after you dealt damage with Neheb. Uh, because you're going to be hitting each of your opponents. Let's say you have three opponents. You hit them each for three. You've got nine damage on them that means post combat you're getting nine mana you use eight of it to draw four cards now as i said there's a bunch of other artifacts draw builders out there like temple bell tap which is just tap everyone draw a card but these are the ones i decided to go with i'm still playing around with the deck but feel free in your version to tweak around the draw let me know what you found uh in terms of draw what was more efficient do you need more draw less draw different cards please let me know in the comments all right, so because the deck is so focused around Neheb, uh, we need ways to protect him. So you've got your standard Lightning Greaves of Swift of Boots. Both cost two. Uh, Lightning Greaves equips with zero, gives the creature haste and shroud. And Swift of Boots equips for one and gives it hexproof and haste. So the difference is the cost of the equip and whether you get shroud or haste. Mostly that's just a keep him from being removed in targeted removal and then because we also play a lot of things that do global damage so you're hitting all creatures you want to make sure that the creature survives your own spells and abilities so you've got dark steel plate which is three mana for an artifact equipment that is indestructible and the equipped creature is indestructible and it equips for two so indestructible creatures are always great then you've got sword of war and peace and sword of fire and ice both cost three, both could quit for two, both give them plus two, plus two, and protection from red, and then white and blue, respectively. And then uh, the secondary ability is not even the point of the card. Mostly it's just to protect from red so that your global damage doesn't kill your creature. But the War and Peace, when it deals combat damage to a player, uh, deals damage to that player equal number of cards in their hand, and then you gain life equal number of cards in your hand. And Sword of Fire and Ice is you get to shock, so deal damage to target creature or player, and then you draw a card. And then, of course, Acromos Memorial is 7 mana for a legendary artifact that gives all your creatures the abilities of Acroma. So they are all Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, and Protection from Black and Red. The Protection from Red part is the most important thing on there, because again, lets you use all those global damage abilities and not lose your commander. So speaking of abilities that do global damage, I've included a bunch of ways to deal damage to each of my opponents. Because the more loss of life you do, the more manage... Uh, the more mana you get. So if I can hit each of my opponents, I get even more mana. So we get things like Magma Quake, which I thought I pulled off of this list and put it on a different one, but it's probably listed twice. Anyway, so Magma Quake is 
red red X for an instant that deals X damage to each creature without flying in each planeswalker. We have Fireball, which is a red and X, for a sorcery that deals X damage divided evenly, rounded down among any number of target creatures and players, and you have to pay one more for each target beyond the first. So let's say I want to hit two targets for two damage each. I would have to pay the red initially, one to bounce it to the second target, and then if I want to deal two, I need to deal that damage equally. So two plus two is four, so I would have to do four damage. So X would be four. So that's a total of six mana. What's nice is with your commander, late game, if you're hitting all your commanders, for the opponents for a bunch, Fireball then is able to hit them for a bunch again. Especially with cards like this next one, which is Price of Progress. Uh, for one in a red, you get an instant that says Price of Progress deals damage to each player equal to twice the number of non-basic lands that player controls. So basically, for each non-basic land a player controls, they take two. Uh, in this deck, the only non-basic land that is going to stay on the field is Valakut. So at most, I'll take two, but everyone else is going to have a bunch. Unless they're playing mono decks, they're always running multiple non-basic lands. This is Commander. Almost everyone's deck is full of non-basic lands, so you're going to be hitting a ton of damage with Price of Progress. Comet Storm is red, red, and X for an instant with multi-kicker 1. So choose target creature or player, then choose another target creature or player for each time Comet Storm was kicked, and then it deals X damage to each of them. So if I had three opponents and wanted to hit them each for 5, I would have to pay red, red, and then 5, and then 4 extra mana, to deal to hit them all so 2 plus 5 plus 4 is 11 so for 11 mana i can hit each of my opponents for 5 damage which would that be 15 damage so then the head would give me 15 mana to play with on the next turn uh post combat main phase and then of course we've got cards like psychosis crawler which is 5 mana for a star star artifact creature horror psychosis's power and talents is each equal to the number of cards in your hand and whenever you draw a card each opponent loses one life so once you've got them out you're guaranteed one damage on each of your opponents uh, before by your post combat main phase because as soon as you draw a card each of them are taking a damage and then if you've got any of those wheel effects you're dealing seven extra damage to each of your opponents so that'll get out of hand real fast then we've got Gutter Snipe, which is two and a red for a 2 2 creature goblin shaman. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Gutter Snipe deals two damage to each opponent. The important part, each opponent. So you're getting a lot of value out of that. So again, if you're in a four man pod, you're hitting three players for two damage. That's six damage. So you're going to get six mana in post combat for casting one spell. And that's on top of whatever damage you happen to do with that instant or sorcery. Then we have Lobber Crew, which is two and a red. For a 0-4 Goblin Warrior with Defender, and tap, Lobber Crew deals 1 damage to each opponent, and whenever you cast a multicolor spell, untap it. So you're never going to untap it with that un secondary ability, but tapping to deal 1 damage to each opponent, again, guaranteed damage, hits each of your opponents, so in a 4-man pod, you're getting 3 damage through for 1 tap. And of course, our next guy, he's the workhorse of this deck, Heartless Hidetsugo. For three red red, you get a four three legendary creature ogre shaman, and tap. Heartless deals damage to each player equal to half that player's life total rounded down. So if you haven't hit anyone yet, you're dealing twenty to every player. So again, in that four man pod, you just dealt sixty damage if no one had taken damage yet. That gives you sixty mana to play with. So, with that fireball, you can practically kill everybody, assuming you've got any mana left at that point. Alright, so Pyrohemia is two red red for an enchantment that says, At the beginning of the end step, if no creatures are on the battlefield, sacrifice Pyrohemia. And then one red Pyrohemia deals one damage to each creature in player. So, for one mana, you can deal damage to each of your opponents. Well, I mean, yeah, you hit yourself, but hopefully you'll be doing more damage to them than you do to yourself. And then you get that much mana at least back post-combat as long as you've got your commander in play. Uh, this is also one of the reasons why you need Pro Red for your commander, so that he doesn't take damage when you're hitting everything and everyone. And then Molten Psyche is one of those cards that is both card draw and global damage. So it is one red-red for a sorcery. Each player shuffles the cards from his or her hand into their library, then draws that many cards. 
Then if you have Metalcraft, they take damage equal to the number of cards they've drawn this turn. So you've got 17 artifacts in this deck, so most likely you're going to be having Metalcrafts. So if you wheel and then do this one, they've drawn 7, and then they'll have 7 in their hand and draw 7 more. So they'll take 14 damage, assuming no other effects. So really good value for the amount of mana you're spending. All right, so um, we were looking at the global damage, so now we've got things that are more of a targeted damage. So Stuffy Doll is 5 mana for a 0-1 artifact creature construct that when it comes into play, you choose a player. It is indestructible, and whenever it takes damage, it deals that much damage to the chosen player, and it taps to deal one damage to itself. So you use it to block, you hit it with your creature spells. When you have Pyrohemia on it, it'll deal damage to the Stuffy Doll, which will then deal damage to the player. So it it uh, gets a lot of value, uh, just incremental value later on, especially when you can do things like some of these other spells that you'll see in the deck. So you've got Fall of the Titans, which is X, X, and Red for an instant. That has Surge for X and Red. Now, Surge uh, triggers if you or an ally um, have cast any spell this turn. So, whether you're playing 2 at a Giant or you cast a different spell before this. Um, so, And then it deals X damage to each of up to two target creatures or players. Really good for finishing off players. Let's say you do a 10-point Fireball before, you know, post-combat. Or, sorry, pre-combat main phase. That'll get you 10 mana to play with. You've then cast a spell this turn. Therefore, you can do it for Surge. So you can one in a red. You've got that 10 mana. You can then do a 9 point to two different targets. So really good follow-up. Shivan Meteor is 3 red red for a sorcery that deals 13 damage to target creature. Or you can suspend it for two turns for one red red. So it is exiled... Uh, with two time counters on it, remove a time counter uh, during your upkeep. When you remove the last time counter, uh, it casts for free. Uh, so hitting Stuffy Doll with this is great. Or once you've got, if you've got repercussions on the field, repercussions is an art, enchantment we'll talk about. Uh, uh, it's also great to hit their creatures. And then you've got Demon Fire, which is one and, a, and X for a sorcery that deals X damage to a creature or player. If a creature dealt damage this way, would die this turn, exile it instead. And if you have no cards in hand, uh, it can't be countered. And the damage can't be prevented. All right, then we have Beacon of Destruction, which is three red red for an instant that deals five damage to a creature or player and then shuffles back into your library. Pretty straightforward, just a straight five damage for five mana. And then we have Volcanic Geyser, which is red red and X for an instant that deals X damage to a target creature or player. Again, super straightforward. And we have Urza's Rage, which is two and a red for an instant with kicker of eight and a red. So three mana plus nine mana. So 12 mana, I think. Yeah. And uh, it can't be countered by spells or abilities. Um, if you just cast it normally, it deals three damage. If you kick it, it deals 10 damage. And that damage can't be prevented. So uh, it's 3 for 3 or 10 for 11. Uh, but then the 11 can't be prevented. So it's it's an interesting. And then because you want to get value out of each of your burn spells, I've got a bunch of ways to copy those spells. Uh, so we've got Dual Caster Mage, which is 1 red red for a 2-2 two, two creature human wizard with flash. When it enters the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery, and you may choose new targets for it. Increasing Vengeance, which is red red for an instant that is copy target instant or sorcery you control. And then if you cast it from the graveyard, you copy it again, and you choose new targets for the copies. It has flashback of 3, 5? Three, 3 red red. So, first time you can copy for... 2 mana, second time you copy for 5 to get 2 copies. Reverberate is red red for an instant that copies target instant or sorcery, and you can choose new targets. Wild Ricochet is fun, because it's 2 red red for an instant that you can redirect the target instant or sorcery, and then make a new copy of it. How of the Horde is 2 and a red that, uh, for a sorcery that says the next instant or sorcery you cast, you may copy. But if you had attacked, you can make an additional copy. So this is when you'd be playing post-combat 
after you've attacked, so you can get two copies of that spell for three mana. Then you have Chandra the Firebrand, which is three and a red for a three loyalty Planeswalker Chandra. Her plus one is Chandra deals one damage to target creature or player, so it's guaranteed damage. Or with the minus three, you can copy your next instant or sorcery. Uh, her minus five, or sorry, minus six, she deals six damage to each of up to six target creatures or players. Uh, probably not going to be relevant. More than likely, you'll just use her to do the plus one or the minus three to copy a spell. Then you have Pyromancer's Goggles, which is five mana for a legendary artifact. That taps to add run red to your mana pool, and when that mana is spent to cast a red instant or sorcery spell, you may copy it and choose new targets. They have Mirari, which is five mana for a legendary artifact that you may copy innocent or sorcery. Uh, sorry, when you cast innocent or sorcery, you may copy it for three and choose new targets. And then dual casting is one to red for an enchantment aura that goes on one of your creatures, and that creature has pay one red, tap, copy, copy target, instant or sorcery you control. And then you can, again, choose new targets. So that's nine ways of copying all of your instant sorcery. So you're getting double value on all of those burn spells. Then, of course, there has to be some ways to deal with creatures or deal damage to players through their creatures. So as I mentioned before, Magma Quake is on that list. It deals damage to creatures and players without flying um, for two red and X. And then we have Insurrection, which is five red, red, red for sorcery. Untap all creatures and gain control of them until in turn they all have haste, so you can steal everybody's creatures and attack with them. Yeah, it costs 8 mana, but hopefully you'll be dealing at least 8 damage with all of those creatures, so you can get your value back post-combat. Then Blasphemous Act is 8 in a red for a sorcery that costs 1 less for each creature on the battlefield, then deals 13 damage to each creature. Hopefully you've got one of those protections on your commander. Now, what's better is if you would also have repercussions on the field. Now, as I was mentioning before, repercussions is really good... Uh, in this deck, when it says for one and red red, you get an enchantment that says whenever a creature is dealt damage, repercussions deals that much damage to that creature's controller. So let's say someone's playing a token deck, they've got 10 creatures on the board, you do last most fact, you do 13 to each of those 10 creatures, That cre those creatures' controller takes 130 damage. Now hopefully you've got protection on your creatures so you're not taking any, but you, there's less creatures in this deck than you would normally see in the standard commander deck, so you'll probably be taking less damage than everybody else. All right, then we have um, ways to get cards out of the graveyard, so get some of those spells back. So we have Volcanic Visions, which is five red red for sorcery that says return target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Then this deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to each creature your opponents control, and then you exile this spell. Uh, so it's a good board wipe, well, quasi-board wipe, and it gives you another spell back, and then once again, if you get repercussions out, it does a ton of damage to those players. Pass in Flames is three and a red for sorcery. Each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until in a turn. That flashback cost is equal to its mana cost, and then it also has flashback for four and a red. So flashback just means you can cast it from the graveyard for its mana cost, in this case. And then Charm Breaker Devils is 5 and a red for a 4-4 four, four creature devil. At the beginning of your upkeep, return an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard to your hand. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets a plus 4, plus 0, and 10 of turn. Most important thing is you're getting one of those burn spells back to your hand each turn. Alright, then we've got a couple of extra enchantments in the deck. We have Furnace of Wrath and Dictate of the, Twelve, of the Twin Gods. Both of them do the exact same thing, uh, which is whenever something would take damage, it takes double that damage. The difference is Dictate has Flash, Furnace does not. Furnace is one red, 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 and Dictate is three red, red. And then we have Aggravated Assault, which is two and a red for an enchantment that says pay three red, red, untap all creatures you control, and you get an additional combat and main phase. So if you are getting six mana from Neheb's ability... Aggravated Assault uses 5 of it, leaving you with 1, and then you can just do this as many times as you want, because he's going to add 6 more mana to each of those post-combat main phases. So it basically turns into infinite mana once you've done 6 damage. And then we've got a couple of other spells that didn't really fit in any of the categories, I just like them in the deck. Um, Vandal Blast is 1 red for a sorcery that says destroy target instant... Or sorry, destroy target artifact you don't control, or you can overload it for four and a red and replace the word target with each. So for five mana, you can kill every single artifact you don't control. Really useful in Commander because everyone plays artifacts. 
Then red elemental blast is one of those in there I have just for fun. It's one red for an instant that counters target blue spell or destroy target blue card in play. So if someone's trying to counter spell one of your cards, you can then counter their counter spell for one red mana. Soul Bright Flamekin is one and a red for a 2 1 creature elemental shaman, which has the ability of pay two, target creature gains trample until end of turn. And then if this is the third time you've resolved this ability, you add eight red mana to your mana pool. So if you pay six colorless or some kind of combination of six mana, you end up with eight mana. So it's a benefit of two mana. Uh, and it gives all your creatures trample, which is nice. Then we have Wildfire, Wildfire Eternal for three and a red. You get a 1-4 creature zombie jackal cleric with the flicked four. So even if the creature is blocked, it's sealed, they, the defending player still loses four life. And if he attacks and isn't blocked, you can cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand for free. And then we have Prowler's Helm, which is two mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature can't be blocked except by walls and equipped two. There's more efficient ways of getting damage through. I just like the flavor on this one because not a lot of people play walls. So it's a sneaky way to get through and the equip and cast costs are cheaper than uh, things like Whisper Silk Cloak. Yeah, Whisper Silk Cloak guarantees the damage. There's no way they can block, but it's three and three to equip. So this gets out a little bit quicker. All right, and that's my deck. That's all 100 cards for Neheb the Eternal. I like to call this deck Neheb the Infernal, or Neheb the Inferno. Lots of global damage spells hitting each of my opponents, trying to get um, more value out of having multiple players. You Hopefully, you kill all of them at once, because as you kill players off individually, the amount of global damage you're doing decreases by that much. So, generally, the decks, as I said, tries to kill everyone at once with things like fireballs or any of those other global damage signs. Anyway, thank you for listening. Please let me know what you think of the deck. If you're watching the video, like it, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to make more videos every week. My goal is to do one or more videos every week. I'm going to be doing my eclectic decks. I hope to just talk about the state of magic. If you're listening on the podcast, I hope you enjoyed. And thank you and have a great day.